Sam Jang. Uh, so I'll get started here. My name is David Barbell. I am the Associate Director here at DC Labs. And I'm going to be talking about the DERP technique. What is the DERP technique? So the DERP technique is a technique for refactoring code. It's my personal favorite technique for refactoring code. And I haven't been able to find anybody else really describing exactly this, this technique, and so I was able to name it. Uh, if somebody else comes up with a better name for it, I'm open. This is what it's called for now. It obeys two fundamental two fundamental principles. One is the single responsibility principle. The single responsibility principle is the idea that every object, every class, every method in your code base should have a job. It should do a thing. You should be able to describe that thing in a very crisp and concise way. You shouldn't say it does this and this and this other thing. You should just have a job. It's commonly known as a, an aspect of good code. It's part of the solid principles. And go ahead and look those up. They're fantastic guidelines for just writing better code. The other principle that the DERP technique depends on is that private methods are the public methods of another object. Now, this may be kind of a funny statement to many of you, but just roll with it. Just Go with it for the purposes of this talk. It's what enables this technique and makes this makes this technique very mechanical. It makes it so you don't have to think about it quite as much. One other thing to note is that this refactoring technique works with any object-oriented language. I've used it in Go, Objective C, Ruby, JavaScript, Python, anything that has objects and the notion of public and private methods, which is really any object, can use this technique. So for example today, I'm going to be refactoring a piece of Ruby code. This is a Rails controller. It's the meetups controller. It handles CRUD for meetups. It has some very basic Rails type methods, um, index and new, create. You see the index and new are very simple, and then create has a lot more going on. It creates a meetup occurrence, and then it picks a couple attendees, and it assigns those attendees to that meetup, and then it notifies via email that those attendees are now attending this particular meetup. So there's a lot going on there. We're going to need to refactor it in order to make it a little more clear and easy to understand. So the, the first step is you defocus your attention. You step back, and kind of squint, blur your eyes, take a shot of tequila, whatever it takes, to, to look at this thing in a more gestalt way. These first two methods, the index and new methods, look very simple. They look like code should look, very tight. Everything is on the left. There's not a lot of crazy nesting. There's nothing too tall. Nothing's pushed to the right. That create method has a lot more going on. And the first thing we notice is that there's these three chunks. They've been broken up by the previous programmer to have white space between them. Those three chunks look like they're discrete things within that object, or within that method. This implies that we can do some extraction, extract out some of these things into other methods. So step two is extract private methods. You identify those chunks within your method, in your code, and then you pull them out into private methods. And if you do that here, you end up with something that looks like this. You have a much smaller create method, and then you have these three private methods. This is a very mechanical refactor. Most IDEs can do it automatically, especially in strongly typed languages like Java. Um, the hard part is actually coming up with the name for the method. But no, no logic changes, no behavior changes, all your unit tests should still pass. Uh, this is purely for legibility and uh, being able to follow the code a lot easier. Now, if we defocus our attention again, 
one thing we notice is that there's still a few things happening up in that create bucket. So we can have a further extraction where there's a new method, there's a method lurking here that we extract into a make meetup private method. So now we have four private methods and we have a very simple public method, which is that create method. It just calls the make meetup method. It sets up a flash and it does a refresh. It's very controllery, very, very easy to follow. You can tell at a glance exactly what it does. And now we have these four private methods. One thing we said early on was that private methods should be public methods of another object. So we need to remove all those private methods. This is going to be a simple cut. You strip all those things out, stick them in your paste buffer, and you end up with an object that looks a lot like this. This controller now is very simple, very clean, very tight, very easy to understand. Now, you have to put those, that logic somewhere. You can't just get rid of it. So we paste those methods into a new object. Let's create a new meetup maker object. So we're calling that make meetup method uh, on a meetup maker object. In that new meetup maker object, we're just going to paste all of those methods directly in. Yeah. We end up with make meetup, pick attendees, make assignments, mail notifications. And if you look at the structure of the code, each of these methods looks pretty good. There's not a lot going on. There's not a lot of discrete chunks that you can further extract out. However, there is something kind of funny about this. We can refactor it further by looking at that top method. And that top method is the only public method. It's the only method that is being called externally. So we can repeat the process. We can take these private methods and extract them out, and just cut them out of this object and paste them into new objects. And what you end up with then is a very simple meetup maker, and we end up with an attendee picker that has the pick attendees method, an assignment maker object, which has the make assignments method, the mail notifier object, which has the mail notifications method. You have these very tight, very small, single responsibility objects that have single responsibility functions inside them. And the meetup maker looks like this. It's calling these other objects and calling those methods that we extracted out. It's very easy to follow. It's very easy to understand. So the steps are you defocus your attention. You start looking for things that can be extracted out of the private variables. You're looking for code smells. You extract out private methods as indicated by those code smells, you remove those private methods, and you paste those methods into new objects. So what happens to your code if you follow this? Well, one thing is you end up with a lot more objects. Now that may seem like a lot of overhead, but each one of these objects is going to be very easy to understand. It's going to be very easy to, to comprehend and describe, and it should be fairly obvious where to place new code and new logic whenever you're modifying one of these things. Um, because these, these objects and methods you generate are going to be very, very simple. It should be much easier to follow your code. At each step, at each layer of abstraction, you're only going to be focused on the responsibilities of that layer, the single responsibility of that layer. And you can just trace through what does this object do, what does this method do, and understand each object and method as it comes in a very easy way. Changing your code also becomes dramatically similar. Because all of these objects are a single responsibility and the division between these objects is very, very clean, everything is very loosely coupled. Most of your code changes, most of your logic changes are going to involve changing a thing somewhere and it should be very obvious where that change should be made. That's pretty much it. Thank you very much.